What's up, movie trivia schmodown fans, and welcome to the schmodown rundown, the official after show for the movie trivia schmodown. I am Brad Gilmore, and today is a fantastic day. It's an historic day for us here on the movie trivia schmodown, the schmodown rundown, I should say. We're going to be doing a special episode where we're drafting our fantasy teams. But let me introduce you to the cast of characters. I'm always joined by my guy all the way in Chi town Last week, he complained about his audio sounding like he was in a tin can. That's because he was recording from the top of Sears Tower. He is Frank Janish. That's right. My audio did sound pretty crappy. I hope, Hopefully, it's a little better now, but uh, I got to get your setup, Brad, because that's pristine. It's like crystal clear. I, I, it's, I'm, I'm very jealous. Well, you know, uh, I'm about the finer things in life, Frank Janish. And also here on the show, we have two very special guests. I'm excited. Making his return to the Schmodown Rundown, uh, I guess a year later after they did this episode last year with Aaron Turner and Frank, we have the head writer for all the questions on the movie trivia Schmodown. He is Chris Skaliski. Hey, guys. Glad to be back. Thanks for having me. I'm ready to talk about this season. I'm so excited, and I'm ready to draft a little fantasy team and whoop you all this year. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. Well, this next man, he makes his debut here on the Schmodown Rundown. He said that he will be the youngest man to ever appear on SK+. Plus. But if you listen to Mark and Christian's podcast this week, according to Mark Ellis, I am 13 years old, so I beat you out on that one. But he is Linus Babcock. Well, if Ellis thinks you're 13, I wonder how old he thinks I am. Well, you sound 45. <laughs> So <laughs> <laughs> that's puberty, I guess. But I'm very excited to be here. I'm a big fan of the show. I listen every week, and it's my honor to be here. And pl- I won my fantasy draft last year, so hopefully I'll do good this year. Oh, look at that. Well, a lot of, lot of fantasy to get into. We're going to get into our draft here momentarily. A couple news items that we want to get through real quick. Frank, last week, um, our great listeners on YouTube and on Twitter – Definitely pointed out that we were a couple of dopes, and we went oh, a little yeah. blank on our guy Mike Carlson. Now, Mike Carlson, we did a little bit more research about him, but before we roll tape here, Skaliski and Linus were telling us a little bit more about Mike Carlson. Uh, Skaliski, what, what do you know about Mike Carlson? And then, Linus, I'm going to throw it to you. Um, just a little bit from from Screen Junkies being on Movie Fights. Um, I was just kind of familiar with who he is, so when Christian... Um, you know, brought him up. I was like, oh yeah, like I've seen him a few times. He uh, he would be a l- really fun for the showdown, and he I know he knows his stuff, so he'll be an exciting competitor to watch for sure. Now, Linus, you said that he is your favorite movie fighter, if I got that correctly. What what do you like about Mike Carlson? What do you think he's going to bring to the showdown? Mike Carlson is a great guy. I've been tweeting at him and Christian to get him on for a while. He's a big fan of the Muppets, which I love, and um, he just has such a great energy with him. He's a very unique, quirky person. But even in the movie fights episode he is in, you can see he has a very wide knowledge of obscure films you wouldn't expect him to know. Like, I remember him once arguing for some Hitchcock film that I had never heard of, but he was just, like, talking plot details and everything. So people think he's going to be this funny competitor, which he is. He's probably going to have an amazing entrance, hopefully dressed up like some wacky character. But I think he's going to surprise people with his knowledge as well. Okay, well, I'm I'm excited to see Mike Carlson. Now, Frank, that we know a little bit more about him, uh, I think yeah. you know, we're going to enjoy uh, it. I need to point out, though, that uh, a couple uh, people tweeted at us. I, I want to give credit to Eric, Frederick, Nikki Baldwin, and another listener of ours, Delisha Russell, who I can remember from way back in the day. Uh, they, they came at us and said, hey, here's some stuff to watch. They sent us a link to the uh, 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 Pixar uh, movie, uh, which Pixar movie deserves a live action reboot episode of Movie Fight. So, uh, great stuff from Carlson in that one. I can see why everyone loves him. So, I want to just thank those three people for uh, reaching out to us and and helping us uh, learn about uh, Carlson just a little bit more. No, yeah, definitely. I that, and then look, that's what our schmovillians out there are for. You know, to give us the knowledge that we don't possess. You know, we can't see everything, we can't watch everything. So, it's really helpful when the listeners and the watch and the viewers on YouTube. Uh, help us out with that. So shout out to you guys, uh, fans of the Rundown. We, do we have a name for the Rundown listeners, Frank? Has there ever been a name established? Uh, you know, I've never uh, thought about that, Brad. That's a good point. Uh, I don't know, Linus, uh, I know you listen to the show a lot. So what have you, has anything ever popped into your head? 
The Rundown Boys. Well, I guess that's not, <laughs> that's not what great a, if you want to appear to what a fantastic appear to both name. sexes, but <laughs> the Rundown Kiddos. <laughs> what a fantastic! Let's stick with Smart right. Billions. Let's do that. Re- uh, okay. <laughs> Remind me to never no. throw it to Linus ever again. <laughs> yeah, I think that we. I have that in my notes now. I have that in my notes. Uh, <laughs> The, schmo- the rundown song. boys, <laughs> love it, yeah. love it. Oh my goodness gracious! Oh man, you may sound forty-five, but you just showed your age right there. Um, okay. Also, we want to say that um, out there, Patreon. Uh, Christian Harloff did talk on he and Mark Ellis's podcast on the Schmoes No Channel. The the Patreon is coming. We're going to be involved with the Patreon, Frank. The Schmodown Rundown. Uh, once again, not to not to belabor the point, but if you want to see the Schmodown get bigger and grow. Definitely support the Patreon. Stay tuned to uh, at Christian Harloff on Twitter and at Schmoes No uh, on Facebook, wherever you really get your information. Stay tuned. We're going to have more announcements about the Patreon very soon. Also, the uh, presenters for the Movie Trivia Schmodown Awards were released this week. And Chris, I want to throw it to you and Linus because, once again, y'all had some interesting takes on some of the people who are going to be there. Chris, uh, anyone you really want to highlight who's going to be a presenter at the awards? I just was uh, really I, I don't know I really liked the 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 list where it showed you know different eras of the showdown. You had like Bonnie um, in there, and then you had Matt Eisman coming back. He's going to be a presenter. Um, Sarah Stretton coming back. Um, just some names I hadn't seen involved with the showdown in a while, and it's good to see their names on the list. Linus, what stuck out to you? Was there someone in particular that you're excited to see their name on the list? Just seeing the co- some of the combos that are there, like Dagnino and JT are going to be presenting award, and that's just going to be great. Having Matt Iceman back, he was such a fun thing to watch during the original Top 10 in Action match, so having him back is going to be fantastic. And just seeing that there's over 20-plus people presenting awards shows that this is going to be a way bigger show than I imagined it to be. It's not going to be like last year's for sure, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I think we're all looking forward to the Schmodown Awards, you know, the presenters, everything. I know, Frank, you're going to be in attendance for the awards, and uh, the rundown is nominated. You never know what's going to happen. We're going to find out here in a, in a few weeks. Uh, one more thing before we get to our fantasy draft that I just want to throw out there. Uh, I know some of you have reached out to me that are in the Houston, Texas area. I was talking to Christian Harloff, and we have a really cool idea of something we want to do here in the greater Houston area. Uh, I, I don't want to give away too much, but if you are, if you're a Schmovillian out there who lives, you know, Houston, Austin, Dallas, anywhere around the state of Texas that's not too far, uh, make sure you hit me up on Twitter at Brad Gilmore. I want to get a head count of everyone out there because if we have enough of you, we're going to do something really special uh, for one of the key signature events this year uh, in season five of the movie Trivia Schmodown. So reach out to me at Brad Gilmore, or you can email me, bradgilmore11 at gmail.com. Let me know if you're out there, and if you are, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be good, as my man Booker T would say. Now, without wasting any more time, it is time to get to our fantasy draft. And Frank, this is where you come in. Why don't you explain to the listeners exactly how this is all going to work? So here's what we're going to do. We, we, we are all going to draft five players. We're not, gonna, we're not drafting teams. We're just drafting five, five players. And we're going to use the, the parameters that the fantasymts.com, uh, that page that was set up uh, by some fans, we're going to use their parameters for scoring and for how teams are done. So we're going to be in line. So if you're on that site, uh, we're using the same parameters, the same scoring, all of that. So we'll be playing along with you as well. We're just not using the site as we record this, uh, just from a technical standpoint. Um, but anyway, so going forward, we have all the list of the competitors. Uh, it's going to be the draft will be a snake order. And uh, I guess I can just reveal who what the order is. And I hate to start well, off. Hold on. Hold on. Well, let me stop you there. You, you let wanna, me, no, okay. no, 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 no. Let me stop you all there. Right. Because I want to put this out there. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist. But Frank oh, did put this <laughs> whole spreadsheet together, and I don't know exactly how he did it, but he did put it together. I just want people to know that. Now, Frank, why don't you reveal the draft order? Yeah, thank, thank you for setting that up, Brad. <laughs> You're quite because, I, because, <laughs> because I am um, miraculously, randomly, uh, the fir- I get the first pick. It's just <laughs> odd how that happened. And that's the truth. And I, that's uh-huh. the truth. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, going forward, number two will be Linus. Number three will be Brad. 
And number four will be Chris, and then we'll snake through the rest of the other four rounds. Uh, so we can. Uh, you ready to get started here, guys? I'm ready let's to do go. It. Let's let's do this, Frank. Now we're gonna pick five players once again, not teams. We're not drafting any teams. This isn't gonna be. This is gonna be like old school WWF for all the wrestling fans out there. Teams are getting broken up. This is like the 2001 draft where the Dudley Boys went to separate brands. One went to Raw, one went to SmackDown. Anything can happen here on this draft edition of the Schmodown Rundown. With that being said, Frank Janish, somehow, some way, you have picked <laughs> number one, and we're gonna actually yeah. explain our, our our number one picks, you know, kind of in some detail. Who are you drafting for the very first, the number one overall pick of the 2018 season five of the movie trivia Schmodown? Well, this one, I thought it might be a little tough, but it actually was a pretty much a no-brainer, and I think maybe most of you and all of those listening would probably agree that the number one pick has to be someone that, that's involved in all aspects, all leagues of the Schmodown, because you want to maximize your point potential here. And so we have the Singles League, the Inner Geekdom, Teams, and that's why I've decided as the number one pick to pick the one and the only Rachel Cushing. Oh, she is man. phenomenal in singles. She is phenomenal in inner geekdom. She's going to be getting title shots in all her leagues. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in teams. We don't know who her partner's going to be, but uh, in singles and in inner geekdom, I think she's going to wreak havoc this season, and that's why she is the number one overall pick of this draft. Wow, that's a good that's a good pick, Frank. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to throw that one. That that's a great great choice, Linus. For your first pick, who do you got? Well, if you know me and my fandom of the Schmodown, it's kind of a no-brainer. It's someone that has the singles belt right now and is never going to lose that belt unless his own partner rips it from him. And him and his partner were going to get the team belts together very soon because they remember the Titans now and they will never forget <laughs> them again. <laughs> it's Mr. Sam Levine. How do I not pick him? He's the singles champion. He's amazing. He's a great guy. He's got a beard, and he wears a blazer. Well, you know what? Those are all great qualifications. Uh, okay, so we have Rachel Cushing for Frank. We have Sam Levine, the current singles champion, which many people regard as going to be the overall player of the year, uh, Sam Levine. It's my turn. I'm going to tell you something real simple about the Gilmore team here. All right, The Gilmore <laughs> team's about two things, the two Cs. We're about checks and championships, all right? That's all we're about this season on the movie Trivia Schmodown. That's why with my first pick, the third overall draft pick in this year's fantasy draft here on the Schmodown Rundown, I'm going to go with a guy who had a hell of a year, both in singles and in teams. This guy solidified, in my opinion, his place on the first ballot of the movie Trivia Schmodown Hall of Fame Whenever that happens, this guy was phenomenal. He was incredible. And that's why he is my first pick. He is a champion right now, but he's the team champion. I'm going with JTE, comeback player of the year. Tell me a guy who had a better year than JTE this past season. That's why going into 2018, he's going to carry that moment. Not Sam Levine, Linus. That was a rhetorical question, by the way. Know your role. I don't know if y'all have covered uh, rhetorical in high school yet, but know it. Doing that now, actually. Uh, doing that I now. Well, good to just know. finished an essay on a rhetorical analysis. Well, that's look right. at that. It's no joke. That's a shoot right there. Okay, that's why I'm going with JTE as my first pick. Skaliski. You're at the bottom of the list here, but fourth pick. There's a lot of names still on the board, a lot of heavy hitters. Who is your first pick? Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sam, let's, Sam's off the board. Rachel's, yeah. Um, Frank, you took my number one pick with Rachel. She was yeah. my uh, Mike Trout rookie season last year, drafting oh my her my gosh. final final pick, and now now she's she shot to the top of the list. But I'm going to go with someone else who I think uh, need balance, need someone who's going to, bring points in in singles in teams and also in an inner geekdom and i'm going with my first pick of the draft is mike ko kalinowski wow okay okay that's an interesting pick right now i did not see him going in the first round at all explain a little bit more why do you like ko so much 
Uh, he's just been a really solid player this year. He's coming up. He's he's hungry for the belts in all three leagues. He's going to be someone who's going to be competing, be at the top of the 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 list for the belt for for inner geekdom and for singles. And I think um, teams they're only going to get better. Um, so I'm just looking for you know a balance of of points there with from Mike. Okay, I like it. I like it. Well, Frank, are we back to you now? Uh, actually, we're snaking. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's yeah, we're snaking. Chris. So, so Skaliski yeah. now. I'm sorry. Yeah, Skaliski, yep, yep. you get to make now the next pick in the draft. Who you got? I really could have flip flop either one of these, but he's a strong player in singles and teams. He's always hungry for all the belts. He's the outlaw. He's oh, John. Oh, oh man, nice. man, you took my pick, Skaliski. <laughs> Damn you. John Roca, fantastic competitor, my favorite player in the movie trivia showdown. I uh, should have drafted him first. That was a great steal there, Chris Galiski. Well, I guess now it's my turn, though. Now I get to pick. I'm looking at the board, you know, and what did I say? I'm about checks and championships. I'm about big money fights and people with gold strapped around their waist. That's why I'm going with a guy whose year, you know, his, his spectacular was spectacular. You know, he fulfilled his destiny at no. Spectacular. That's no, why I'm going man. with Jason Justice Inman for my second pick. That is a great pick. Ugh. Hey, man, about checks and championships. Linus, now that you've done your rhetorical analysis, <laughs> give it to me. You're taking the number seven pick in the fantasy draft for the movie trivia showdown you're going with who well it's someone who i think has the best theme music in the entire showdown it's someone who you could say is a father no uh, come on godfather <laughs> he is the other half of above the line he is the godfather drew McWeeny. he has his own figure of himself that he brings to matches to for good luck so you know if you carry a funko pop to a match and put it on the table there's no way you can really lose anymore. And that Patriots match was kind of a test run, you know, for above the line. They're going to get it next time. No problem. <laughs> Drew <Jeff> McWeeney, <coughs> if <Jeff> anyone's <laughs> going to get the singles belt, it's going to be Drew McWeeney. Him and Sam are going to share it. So he's my second pick. Co-champions and best friends. <laughs> uh, line, uh, Linus, we got your, your one and two. Frank, back to you. Snaking around. Rachel Cushing obviously took... A strong competitor off the board. I think a, a well-deserving number one overall pick. Who are you going with the eighth pick in the draft? Yeah, this is a little more interesting. And, uh, you know, I'm really – I'm kind of torn about who I'm going to take here. But I'm I'm going to take Jeff Snyder. Wow, he's a, he's okay. A, he's a champ. He's a champ. He's going to be in all their championship matches this year in the, in the team division. I think they are going to – I uh, have a couple championship matches here. I think they're not going to lose for a while because uh, if above the line could, mm. can't can't do it. Uh, I just don't know who else is out there. And above the line's got to reach, got to get back to that that position again to have a shot. So I like the Patriots and all the points that comes with championship matches. I like Jeff being a part of that and uh, scoring me some big points this year. Okay, okay. Well, I like it. Well, hey, not only do you have the eighth pick, you have the ninth pick. So back it up. You got Jeff Snyder, Rachel Cushing. Who's your number three? Yeah, my number three. This one's mm, this one's interesting, uh, and I might I might be taking a shot here, um, and I might be reaching a little bit. But I've heard heard some promising things. I've seen some promising things. Uh, I hear a big. It's gonna be 2018 is gonna be a big year for this individual. Um, they're they're one of the best heels, if not the best heel in the league. Uh, one of the most rowdiest teams we've ever seen in the Schmodown. And it's not Andrew Guy, but it's I'm going with Ben Bateman. Okay. Why Ben oh, Bateman man. and not Andrew Guy? Uh, well, stats don't lie for one and two. Andrew well, give Guy's me the stats. Give me the like, stats. What's their, what's their individual stats? Oh, Bradley. Oh, Bradley. <laughs> what? Let me tell you something. No, it, it's, 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 it's a legitimate question. And uh, which I am pulling up as we speak, and that's why I'm stalling with all this, you know, fill in stuff. But I got it right here for you. I got it right here for you. Ben Bateman, he had a hell of a year this year, as we all know. And 
He is scoring nearly 67% in the team league and individual questions compared to Andrews, 52%. So there's a big disparity there. I like Ben Bateman a lot. He showed a lot of uh, promise in that in that Fatal 5-way match, the, the qualifier, even though he did lose to Jason Inman. But this guy's hungry. And if there's anything that I've learned about watching and listening to Ben Bateman, he is going to study and he is going to bring the fire this season. And he's going to score me a lot of points this year. Okay. Okay. I like it. I like it. You, you convinced yeah. me. You convinced me. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Okay. I like it. <laughs> All right. For the number, 10th, uh, number 10 pick in the draft. We're going back to Linus. Linus, so far you have Sam Levine. You have the godfather, Drew McQueenie. You got ATL above the line all wrapped up already in your stable. Who are you rounding it out with with that number three pick? I think I'm going to give it to someone who I'm taking a little bit of a shot on this one. And this guy, his faction just earned a shot at a number one contenders match. It's the android, Mark Andrico. He Ooh. is a little dicey sometimes, but he showed great promise, whether it's the free-for-all, some of the team matches, some of his singles matches, but... The main reason I'm picking him is because the faction he is in with MF5 has a number one contenders match. So he could be playing for a title at any point in teams or in singles. So I think he is a good bet for this league. That's actually a very well thought out pick. And I'm kind of shocked by it, Linus. You don't strike me as the one who <laughs> would be well thought out. But, you, but you've thought about this. You know, Linus right now is the dark horse of having the best team out of all of us. Uh, I'm not really Ooh. pleased with that at all, but um, let me let me move on. Well, I have JT, right? I mean, actually, absolutely, in my opinion, the comeback player of the year. He was definitely the Patriots were the team of the year. Now, Frank, just like I said that this could happen, like old school WWF style, you've split up my Dudley boys, which which is is sad for me <laughs> because I wanted I wanted all the champs. Yeah, I want I'm about checks and championships. That's why. I'm going to go with the guy who competed in probably the match of the year. I'm going to go mm. with a guy who has a high, high IQ in one specified area, but I'm assuming that he's a well-rounded player. I'm going to go with a guy who brought the doomsday to Ken Knapsack. I'm going with Sam Whitwer, the Star Wars champion, as my number three pick. Sam Whitwer was so impressive in that Star Wars Iron Man match, obviously the match of the year. I don't think there's really any debate about that. And also, we th I think that Sam Witwer is going to make a splash in regular competition and not just Star Wars division. And I think if you let him go in that singles division, hey, Linus, you better watch your man Sam Levine's back. Because I think I Sam Whitwer has that raw talent to take over the entire league. That's why he is my number three pick and the 11th overall pick in my fantasy draft. Skaliski, I'd like to see you top that. All right. As a, as a players were dropping here, my team's starting to shape up. I, ha I saw a theme coming up with, with the players with my team. You know, I got KO there in the first round. He's... He's hungry for all three belts. He he wants that that inner geekdom belt. He wants that singles belt. You know, Roca, he wants the belts back. You know else and in round three, you know who else is hungry? And that's the beast. No. Him, the beast Bibiani. He wow. I think he's gonna have a solid, solid season, singles, and I'm really excited to see what critically acclaimed can do as a team. Um, what he can do as one half of that team uh, coming up in twenty eighteen. Those should get a lot of matches and should help with a lot of points. You know, I'm kind of surprised that Bibiani did fall as far as he did. He's number 12 overall. Uh, yeah. Interesting because he did have a rough year wins and losses wise. Um, so just for him to fall to number 12 is a little surprising when I when I look back on it right now. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty far fall. I mean, I think we all saw the Beast being a champion by now in the league. So uh, for him to go number 12, 12 overall is a little surprising, but hey, there's still a lot of big names on the board. And Chris, you get the you get the back door of that pick. Who are you gonna get to take for number 13? And start you're really rounding out your list here. So far, you got William the Beast Bibiani, you got the outlaw John Roca, you got KO Mike Kalinowski. Who are you gonna round it out with? My 13th pick, she's also very hungry. She's hungry like 
the wolf, you should say. Ooh, I'm going you with son of a gun. With Miss Clark <laughs> Wolf at my 13th pick. She wants it bad, and I think she's going to have a breakout year. Oh, you. Chris, I thought, you know, I did like you before we were recording this episode, and now I'm, I'm reconsidering that because Clark Wolf was going to be on my list, too. Almost answering 70% of her questions. Shout out to the stat man over there, Frank Janish, for that number. 70%. That's an incredible, incredible stat line, and that's why she was going to be one of my picks. Wow. Now i gotta, now I got to go back to the board. i got to look here what, what I can do here because she Make was— sweat. You are definitely making me sweat, and I, I really, <laughs> I really did enjoy her this year. I think she made, like you said, a big splash, and I think next year, ooh man, she's definitely going to come through something serious. Um, as I'm scrolling through here, I'm looking at some potential people, uh, and I, I know who I'm going to get. You know, sometimes you need, like I said, I'm about checks and championships, right? But I'm about titles. And sometimes a title is more than just a piece of gold you wear around your waist. Sometimes things like commissioner or founder, those are pretty big titles. Somebody who almost made history last year. Somebody I picked to be the singles player of the year for beating people like Dan Merle, for beating the now who shall not be named, and many others. With over 60% of his questions answered correctly, I'm going with Christian Harloff as my number four. You got to take him, man. You got to take him, man. You, you talk about somebody who knows the game better than anybody. He, he invented the game. He created the game. He is the all-seeing eye in the movie Trivia Schmodown. And if he's going to come back, he's, if he sees Thad Williams somewhere out there, you know what he's going to be doing? He's going to be whooping his ass next time they get into the squared circle of the movie trivia schmodown he's going to take back that commissionership and who knows i didn't think that he'd be champion i didn't think he'd be singles champion in 2017 and he proved me wrong i think he proved everybody wrong that's why christian harloff is starting to round out my list he's number four on my team as we go to linus well that's gonna be pretty tough to top that so let's see if i can top that yeah. i'm gonna draft so funny who- oh it might be the year of this person. <laughs> he was supposed to have a singles match last year. Scheduling conflicts, it didn't happen. Hopefully, this will be the year of Jim Vavido. Dang it, Linus. <laughs> he has a team match coming up for a number one contendership. He's probably going to win that. He has a pretty good shot of beating the Patriots, but you never know. They win. They always win. They're, they're the Patriots. But Vavido... It's going to be the year of Avida. He's going to go in the singles. He's going to make a splash. We don't know how available his schedule is going to be, so that's going to be kind of tough for drafting this person. But it's my fourth pick. I'm pretty confident in my team thus far. So taking a shot with Jim Vavida is something I'm glad to go with. So top that. Wow, well, top that, Frank Janish. Can you? Can you top that? I mean, let's, let's be honest here. So let's see what Frank's got so far. Frank's got Rachel the Crusher Cushing. He's got Jeff Snyder. He's got Ben Bateman. Who's your number four? Yeah, so they're playing top that in, in, in a big match. And I think top ten's going to do big things. I know Ruck is off the board, but his teammate, Matt, knows he will be privy to those team points as well. So that's why I'm going with Mr. Mighty Matt Knows at number 16 overall. Huh. That's a very interesting pick. Matt Knows. So... You, you okay? So Matt knows though he's normally just a team's guy. Do you think he's going to make a singles run this year? He he dabbled uh, a few times this year. I think he had what three matches. Let me take a look here. He had three matches. He was two and one. Um, he had thirty nine total points uh, scoring through those three points. So, uh, but he he was in teams. So you get points for team matches as well as we're following the fantasy mts.com uh fantasy draft page we're following those rules so uh whatever points he gets in a team match they also uh, are awarded to him so i think top 10 overall as a team is going to score some big points and big matches and that's what i'm kind of banking on here late in the draft in the fourth round okay okay so now though you have so far rachel kush you have Jeff Snyder. You have Ben Bateman. You have Matt Nost. For your fifth and final pick in your fantasy draft, number 17 overall, Frank Janish. 
Who's going to be the guy who completes your fantasy? Well, as you know, I'm a big fan of Star Wars. I'm a big fan of the Star Wars League. And, Brad, I saw your Sam Witwer, and I'm going to raise you an Alex Damon. If anyone is going to take down Sam wow. Witwer, I believe it is going to be Alex Damon, and that is going to be for some big points. And I think uh, I think we're going to see a lot more Star Wars matches this year, and I think Alex Damon is going to be a part of them, and that's why he's going to be my number 17th overall pick in the fifth round, Alex Damon. Wow. So Frank with a heavy team. Linus, we talk about fantasies. Who's fulfilling yours? I'm surprised this person has not been drafted yet. I was looking through the list, and I just realized, hey, he's open. So I'm going to take this guy. I talked a lot about this being the year of blank, the year of blank. And there was a poll that went up that said, who do you guys think is going to be the star of the 2018 season? And this person was number one. And that's someone who's going to add a little bit of class to this league, Lon Harris. Ooh. <laughs> Drafting the professor. Ah. He's already got an easy win on his hand with Cody yeah. Hall. No offense, Cody Hall. <laughs> but that's going to be a fun match to watch. Killing me. A lot of points right there. Lon Harris, he made a splash in his first match. He knows the game well. He knows how to play a character well. And he's there often. He wants to compete. And it's going to be the year of Harris. And it's going to be the year of everyone in my draft because that's how it works. Okay. <laughs> Solid team. Solid pick. I like it. I'm going to tell you a little thing here. So I'm going to tell you about two great all-time players or competitors in their respective fields, right? Let's talk mm -hmm. first about The Rock. We all love Dwayne Johnson, big movie star, right? The Rock, I don't know if you know this, Linus. You might be too young to remember. He was a wrestler <laughs> at first. What? And yeah, yeah, he was a pro wrestler, and he was actually very popular. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Dwayne Johnson and The Rock are the same person? Dwayne Johnson and, and The Rock are the same person, yes. The Brahma Bull, oh. the great one, the people's champ, the jabroni-beaten, pie-eating, trailblazing, <laughs> eyebrow-raising, son-of-a-gun, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, yes. So he was in WWE for a time. And then one time, Vince McMahon, for some unknown reason, he, he said to, to The Rock that you're suspended indefinitely. Some people thought because The Rock was acting kind of, you know, he, he wasn't treating Vince right. Some people say that he had to go film the Scorpion King. I don't know which is right. But he was suspended indefinitely. And when he came back oh, from suspension, boy. he won the WCW championship from my guy and sh the Schmoville zone, Booker T. He beat Booker T for that WCW championship. And then another great player, probably the greatest quarterback of all time, Tom Brady. For some reason, the NFL wanted to suspend him for four games. <laughs> He was spinning for four games because he what? He let a little air out of a ball? Who knows? Weather conditions are strange in New England. That's all I'm saying. And when he came back, what did he do? What did he do when he came back? He dominated. And he won a championship. That actually happened in Houston, Texas. I saw it with my own eyes. I wasn't there, but I was watching the television. <laughs> so that's why for my... Fifth and final pick, number 19 overall. This man will return from suspension, and he will dominate the movie Trivia Schmodown, not only in teams, in singles. He is going to be a champion. That's why I'm picking the son of Roca, Andrew Guy. Oh, jeez. I do. I feel really good about I feel really glad that you picked Andrew Guy because he's not that good. Oh, he's oh, not. Oh, he's not that good. He's not that, not that good. good. So I feel pretty good about I'm this. I'm with Frank. Have you seen? Did you see that spear to John Roca? Yeah, you, see you don't get three point you, round you don't one. Get, you don't get any points for for spears, just so you know. So okay. Well, that's who I'm going. With. I'm going with Andrew Guy. That's my guy. That's okay. Andrew Guy's right. my guy. Okay. Yeah. Skaliski. You're gonna right, do now it with that the twentieth and final pick. Yeah. Now that I've woken up from my nap between picks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to, to adjust on the fly a little bit. Linus took the next two people that I was having had an eye on, but you know, after full, oh, wow. further analysis, I uh, think I nailed my last pick. And seeing both Whitwer and Damon, you need somebody to combat both of those guys. And I saw it in his eyes in that five way, and I think he can do it. And that's Mr. Joseph Scrimshaw. Ooh, that's Ooh. another. That's a great pick. Solid. That is a great pick. Solid, solid pick. Scrimshaw. So so why Scrimshaw? Explain a little more, Skaliski. 
Um, just that you know, someone else that could compete in the Star Wars match get a lot of points. Um, have it if it hadn't been for maybe like the who said it category he got in on the wheel. Uh, he he could be he could have been who faced Ken in in the five way. I think um, he could have maybe taken it from Ken, but just from what I know of Scrimshaw here hearing, hearing him talk and getting to see him compete in person. Um, I think he can be a really solid, solid competitor for the Star Wars League, and I don't. I only expect that to grow as the, as the league continues this year. No, absolutely, the Star Wars League is going to continue to grow, and you know, I got the guy at the top of the mountain right now. Well, guys, that's actually our draft here. But here, I'm going to throw a monkey in the wrench here. I'm a, I'm gonna go on the fly. I'm calling an audible. Is oh, there boy. anybody? Well, I'm going to start with you, Frank. Is there anything? That, is there anyone on your list that you're you're looking at, and you're like, you know, I don't know. I don't know if this is my guy. I don't know if that's who I'm going to go with. Is there anybody you want to trade? On my, on my list right now. Um, is there any I, trade you that know, you I, see on the board? Would you like to offer or propose a trade, Frank? Uh, I mean, sort of, but I know this person would not give him up uh, because I wish I would have made this pick. Well, propose the uh, trade instead. Oh, yeah. All right, all right, all right, uh, Mister Mister Linus Babcock. Uh, um, I'm listening. Yeah. So. Uh, Lon Harris, your fifth pick, the guy you thought of the least. Um, I thought of a guy a little higher than him, a couple spots higher, and Ben Bateman. Um, I like what <laughs> Lon's doing. So I mean, you know, uh, I think I think you like Ben. I think you like Ben's I'm a good guy. I'm not gonna take Ben. If we do <laughs> trade, Ben could go off somewhere else. <laughs> well, I had to try. I had to try. Uh, I'm, so, I'll think about it. Frank. Is that a decline? Think while okay, we, Frank. While we digress. Frank, I do have a. I do have one for you. I have Uh-oh, a particular okay. trade option. Okay. Even though I, I love him and I think he's going to have a great 2018, I, I'm going to propose a trade. I'm going to offer up Christian Harloff. Ooh. And in return, I want Jeff Snyder. Do I want you Jeff know Snyder. It? I want Jeff Snyder. I want Jeff, and I'll tell you why I want Jeff Snyder. I want both of the Patriots on my team. <laughs> I'm about championship. No, no, no. Don't laugh at me. I'm about championships, man. All right, if they both win and they both do well, like I've seen them do. Now, okay, in the spectacular match, JTE okay. carried them. Hold, hold on, on hold on, hold on. In the spectacular oh, match, on. JTE did carry them in that match. But Jeff Snyder beat Drew McQueenie. Jeff Snyder yeah. has a fantastic yeah. singles record. So I'm going to I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna go. I'm, <laughs> are you denying my trade? Or is that a decline? Yeah. There's no way I'm going to give you Boardwalk while you have Park Place. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay, well, let me make it a little sweeter for you then. <laughs> I will trade you Christian Harloff and Andrew Guy. <laughs> well, hold on, though. It's not, a, it's not a crazy pick. It's not a crazy pick. You complete team action, and you get an extra player. You complete team action, and you get an extra player. All I want is one. You get two for the price of one. And Christian Harloff, that's hey man, he might be a veteran. He might be a veteran. But just like James Harrison, James why, Harrison why still got something to give. James Harrison said, put, put me on the Patriots. I got why something do you to give. Why do you want to get rid of Christian so bad? I don't want to get rid of Christian so bad. I don't play. You just offered twice. I'm not <laughs> going to offer me twice. No, I'm just sweetening the same deal. I'm just adding another piece. I really want Jeff Snyder and JT on the same team. I want them both on my fantasy team. And I think this is a nice package. Harloff and Andrew Guy, you complete your team action, and you get the founder, the creator, the former champ on your team. All right, here, here's this. I'll counter. I'll give you Jeff Snyder. No, no, no not going to happen. I, I thought about it. I'm not going to do it. No. No, not going to happen. All right, la- happen. My, last, my last trade option. I'm doing one more. I'm doing one more trade option. To you, give me all four players? What are you going to do? No. No, I will trade you. I will trade you JT for Rachel Cushing. Ooh. Get out of here with that mess. Get out of here. Frank, you're a terrible general manager. I am throwing you here. great here. trades. I, I got a trade for you, Frank. If you if you're interested. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh Bibiani for Bateman. Ooh. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Scholastic All right. with the ether. Shoot. Oh man. That's good. That's a wow. Now we're now we're talking some serious business here. You see how that works, Brad? Now we're talking some serious <laughs> business. Ooh. Two people who are going to play in the league. All right. 
I, I'll uh, yeah, I'll make that trade. Oh that wow, trade. wow. Great. Okay, so Ben All Bateman right. now goes to Chris Skaliski's team, and William the Beast Bibiani goes to Frank Janish. That's a pretty. That's a monstrous trade, Chris. I got to throw it to you. What's your idea of getting ready to the Beast? Um, I just see. Well, Beast is great, but I I see that the Bateman. Um, he's he's really hungry for the uh, for the inner geekdom, and I know he's studying for that. So uh, I I want it, I want the that versatility in my lineup, so to speak. So. That's why I went for uh, the Bateman, the five tool player, instead of maybe the the uh, the power hitter, as okay. it were. Okay. Wow. I have one. You have one, Linus. Linus, what you got? So, Chris, I got one for you. Okay. I'm willing to give you someone who's got number one contenders match for Mr. Ko himself, Mark Andreco for Mike Kalinowski. He's got a lot of promise this year. Hmm. Mm. And I came up with Mike Kalinowski's nickname. Oh, well, <laughs> if that's the case, then, well, <laughs> no. Sorry, as I said, going for that well-rounded player. and I get Andrei it. Go, yeah. Not quite there yet in the IG, but. Okay. I had to do that for Mike. So. It's, not, it's not a bad, it's not a bad uh, proposition. I, I give you credit for trying to outline this because, and Draco, he's a, he's a, he can be a really good player. Uh, so, I think uh, that's a. We'll see how that works out in, 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 as we go on through the year. It'll be interesting to see who, who if uh, if uh, Chris missed on an opportunity or if he made the right move. Because I think it could. Andrea could have a big year. It's going to be fun to watch. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Can I give an honorable mention? Go ahead. Go ahead. Line. I want to give an honorable mention to Matt Ashley and Mike Carlson. I think Matt Ashley. He could also be a team champion this year and. He had one loss last year, but I hope he comes back this year strong. And Mike Carlson's a great guy. You know, interestingly enough, Robert Meyer Burnett, Ken Knapsack, not drafted at all. Two former champions. Uh, I think that's kind of interesting. Hector Navarro either. Hector Navarro not drafted. Was Dan Merle on the board? If Dan Merle was on the board, no no Dan Merle draft either. Well, he is retired effectively, as, so well, he was not on the board. But yeah. you yeah, could, well. I guess you could have picked him. Uh, yeah. but, you know. maybe, maybe if we had a... Expanded rosters, maybe, but with with five, you gotta you gotta pack that lineup with with. Yeah, but here's the here here's the fun thing about just having five people on a team. There is some uh, people to pick up on the waiver wire, like oh, sure. Matt Atchity, like you know perhaps uh, Mr. Carlson, Mike Carlson. So uh, there's also Eric Goldman from Top Dad. He hasn't been picked. You have the other end of DC Movie News, Adam Gertler. So mm-hmm. even though he doesn't compete in singles, he still puts up helps put up big points for DC Movie News and teams. So there's there's a lot of um, Hey guys! Kill anonymous. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll see. No one that drafted happens. him. That was a surprise. Uh, guys, uh, I kind of feel bad about this, but I understand why some people might not draft them due to their proximity to Collider and their availability. But that's Robert and Vanessa from Late to the Party. Uh, when they do Franco. show up, or Tim Franco for that matter, correct? Uh, when they do show up, they can put up some monster points. I. I I understand maybe the hesitation because they may not participate as much as people would like, so that you know prevents you from picking them higher or lower in your drafts. But hey, if you got a down week and you need to pick up some points, and you know that they're going to compete, uh, you may want to pick them up on your waiver wire if they're available. So uh, I think with the with the, the four of us here and the the other people on the waiver wire, there's a lot of fun to be had picking up and dropping players throughout the year. So yeah, I don't think this thing. is how our teams are going to look at the end of the year. Mark Ellis, another guy not drafted. Yeah. Now, I know his status is kind of up in the air. Scott Mance not drafted either. Um, very, very nope. interesting, the, the people who weren't picked at all. Oh, I, don't you sleep know, on uh, Stacey Howard, too. I think she could. Oh, yes. I think she could, you know, she's... You know, we we got to we saw what she did firsthand to Ellis this year. I think she's a very good player that we haven't just got to see very much of yet. So we'll see what happens. Great against Foyko. But Brad, I can't believe you did not draft your guy. Your guy, my guy, Jay Washington. Jay Washington. I know, I know, but I'm looking at it. Look, I'm about checks and championships. I love Jay Washington, but he didn't get the strap, (laughs) brother. All right, that Jason Inman did. (laughs) Jason Inman did. Sam Whitworth did. JTE's a champion. Frank, last ditch effort. Oh jeez, Sam Whitworth for Jeff Snyder. Ooh, interesting. Okay, that's an interesting one. But yeah, I just don't know Star how Star Wars on there. I know. Yeah, but he's a champion. But I don't. I, I don't know how you much you drop Damon. Really compete. 
I really don't know how much Whitworth is going to compete outside of Star Wars. I would like to think he could show up for one or two matches in singles. That's like a that would be a dream to see him compete in regular singles. But I appreciate the offer on this one, Brad. But I'm going to have to politely decline this one. God, you are definitely the jerk off when you were playing Monopoly <laughs> and would never give up Boardwalk oh, ever. Oh, that's He's right. Got a, three of the railroads. <laughs> Right. Someone has three. Frank has one. He's just not giving it up. I know. And you know, and, and, Frank, and Frank, Frank will have Frank will have the utilities. Right. He'll have Boardwalk, and then he'll have like Baltic Avenue, and then he'll just refuse. <laughs> he refuse to trade anything. <laughs> That's just That's that right. kind of guy. And every time he rolls, he goes directly to jail. But Frank, I I, I, I can't believe you turned down all of those. I gave you a Harloff Andrew guy package, and you would not do it. So it's all right. Well, uh- for we'll sure, let the com- we'll let the comments decide if I made the right decision or not. I would like to hear if if people think Brad made some good trades to me, or if I did the right thing, turn them on. I'd love to know in the comments uh, uh, what the people think. So Frank, you no had Josh McCuga. no Josh McCuga drafted either. Very That's sad. interesting. I like Josh pretty- McCuga. I don't you know statistically. I mean, anybody who almost gets you know taken to the limit by Tom Dagnino. I don't know if he's just going to be high in fantasy. That's not a knock to him, but I mean that was a pretty. He won, but you know, did he? he? Did. You know, did he? That <laughs> Andreco match, Finn Draco match, is still my favorite match of all time. Finn Draco, that match. was that was a good one. So Frank, you have Rachel Cushing, you have Jeff Snyder, you have Ben Schneider. Bateman, Schneider, you have Ben Bateman, Schneider. you have Matt Nost, and you have Damon. That's a pretty solid team. That's a pretty solid team. Linus, you have Sam I Am Levine. You got the Godfather, Drew McWeeny, Mark the Android and Draco, Jim Vavada, and you got the Professor Lon Harris. That's a pretty solid team, too. I personally think my team's the best, and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> I got JTE, who's half of the team champion, Jason Justice Inman, the inner geekdom champion. I got Sam Whitworth, the Star Wars champion, Christian Harloff, the founder and former champion, and Andrew Guy, who's going to have a breakout year in the 2018 mm-hmm. Schmodown. But now that I look over here, oh, wait, I'm sorry, but then the, the trade for was Ben Bateman for William That's Bibiani. Right. I'm sorry, Frank. So you actually do have William Bibiani. I, I forgot to mention that. And That's then, right. I have a better team than you. That's right. And <laughs> then we go to Skaliski. skaliski has got Mike K.O. Kalinowski, the outlaw, John Roca, he has now been Bateman. Very interesting pick there. Very interesting trade made. And he has classy Clark Wolf, and he's got Scrimshaw. Scrimshaw. He's got that's a pretty good team too. I, I want to throw it to mm-hmm. the Schmovillians out there. Who do you think has the strongest team? Is it Linus Babcock? Is it Chris Skaliski? Is it Brad Gilmore? Is it Frank Janish? Make sure you leave a comment or shoot us a tweet at Schmodown. RD. Now, guys, while we still have y'all here, Skaliski, I have a couple questions for you. So you are the head writer for the questions in the movie trivia showdown. As we know, a lot of the competitors like to listen to the show. A lot of fans out there obviously listen to the show. What goes through your mind when you're watching a movie to pick out a particular question? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, you know, a lot of times it's just, you know, especially if it's something I've seen before, um, you know, I'll have like a notepad where I just kind of like maybe take a note or something or something just jumps out at me and, and it's like, oh, that's a great question. Or, you know, fans, fans will submit questions and I'll go through those and those will trigger ideas as well as using, you know, what they've sent. Um, they'll trigger ideas of movies to, to maybe look up that I've never heard of or that I've never seen. Um, but a lot of it's just um, little things that you don't really pay attention to. Um, when you just kind of watch a movie casually, you'll you'll pick up on um, just things here and there that you think, oh, that'll make a great question. So you 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 draw it down, you try to craft it into what what you know think will make a fair question for the for the match. Okay, interesting. So, um, is there any? Okay, so a lot of people like to know this. Are you a Netflix subscriber? Or are you a Hulu guy? Like, where are you pulling these movies from? Um. Or is that too bit of baseball? I mean, no, no. I mean, some of it's you know stuff I watch on Netflix. You know, sometimes I'll just stare at my DVD collection and be like, "Oh, we haven't asked a movie about or asked a question about that movie before, or we've it's been you know six months since we've covered you know had something from there, 
or I look at my DVR, which is always full, um, see what I got on there. Um, and then just go on, you know, on lists, you know, on online, on IMDb, you know, look at categories that, you know, maybe we need to b- bolster questions with and I'll just pull a list of movies and start going through, um, you know, different different genres, different categories, just jotting movies down and then going through and uh, doing some research, hitting the IMDb pages, hitting the Wikipedia, um, kind of all that type of stuff. So it's it's really from all over. There's not really one specific location. Now, is there a category? Is there one specific category or, or a couple that you can think of off the top of your head where you're like, man, it's getting a little bit difficult to come up with questions for this category because it's been pulled so many times, it's been spun so many times. Is there any particular category that stands out to you? Uh, comic book movies is a big one because um, not only because of inner geekdom, which you know you you go with the deep cuts there, but a lot of times in the main matches, you know, if someone gets Spinner's Choice, um, we have a lot of people that like to go to that if it's on the wheel. We have a lot of people whose that's their strength, so you know that that'll be on the wheel more times than not. Um, I mean that, that's you know my wheelhouse, it, but you know we, we go to it a lot, so that it has become d- more difficult to write. So that's why sometimes you'll see some deeper cuts. Um, I try to keep those more in inner geekdom if I can, um, and then just some of the other maybe more uh, broad categories. I would say, like action adventure. You know people hit that quite a bit. Um, horror thriller. A lot of people like horror thriller horror films, and that's especially uh, challenging because that's not my strength. So I have to really do a lot more research on those than if I just, you know, are familiar with the movies. So, um, those are, those are some that that can be tough. Um, some that are harder to get to just because we've used them so many times and whether they're my strength or, or not personally. Frank, was there anything that you, uh, wanted to ask Chris while we have him here? Uh, Chris, yeah. while we have him here. Yeah, you know, with the expansion of inner geekdom becoming more regular throughout the year, and now the Star Wars questions popping up, I'm just kind of wondering how has your workload changed in terms of hours? How much time do you spend uh, per week? Do you think uh, <laughs> crafting questions, coming up with questions? It, I mean, it varies. You know, on a regular week, you know, I'll spend eh, maybe ten hours a week, maybe. Um, but then when you get to tournament time, um, you know, maybe double that. Just kind of depends on you know how much do we have in our bank of questions mm-hmm. and how many you know how many times categories get used. Um, so it, it just kind of varies if if there's a lot of matches you know taping that week or what's going on. But you know it it can be you know ten hours, it can be twenty. Um, but then you know if I do a twenty hour week, maybe the next couple weeks I don't have to put in as much you know because I've got a, a solid base. So I just try to stay on top of you know things most I can and then. Um, fill in the gaps when when we need them. Do you uh, do you use this time the off season to build that bank, or do you take a little bit of a break here and kind of relax? Uh, after the spectacular, I took um, f- a few weeks of just not looking at it at all for a while, <laughs> just to kind yeah. of get away. Um, especially in the fall with all the tournaments and the app, you know that was a lot of work and um, but a lot of you know good content. So I took you know three or four weeks of um, not really looking at it too much, and this over the past couple of weeks really started getting back into you know refining some questions that we've had in there, um, pu- you know pulling more questions from fans, uh, going through those, double checking those, editing those, and and getting things ready for the new season, which is coming up pretty quickly. I got uh, one last question for you, and it's about how questions are worded. I've always thought that perhaps the way questions are worded as to the difficulty of the question is uh, do you use the wording of the question to pertain to if it's like a three pointer or a five pointer in terms of how you word the question? Um, how I word it just kind of depends on what I'm asking. Sometimes I try to I try to give additional hints. You know, especially if it, it might be a little bit more difficult answer to pull, I'll try to give some more hints in the question, like um, a, a actor or more actors or actresses, a, a year, a little bit of hint to the plot, maybe depending on what I'm looking for. Um, as far as three and five pointer, sometimes that's that can just depend on like what you're familiar with or what your gener- you know generation you are. You know, if you're someone who grew up in the '90s and 2000s, something from the late seventies and maybe eighties that people, 
people are, you know, 10, 15 years older than me, like that's an easy question for me. Maybe never heard of the movie. Um, and, you know, usually plot specific questions are a little bit higher point pointer. Um, not always, but that's, I try to go higher points for more plot centric questions and then like actors, directors for lower, you know, mm-hmm. unless it's a, you know, an older movie or maybe a more obscure title that is not as mainstream. Those might be higher pointers. Um, but you know, I, you know, I, I put a suggested value in there and then we, you know, Mark Christian and I, and, and whoever's, you know, hosting, they kind of look at it and, you know, make the final call, but that's kind of how it, how we, how we go about that. Wow, man. I, you know, I always knew there was a lot going into this, you know, but it's, it's interesting now that we had you here. I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to ask you, you know, on the show. Hey, Linus, um, question for you. You know, we talked about categories that have been spun and categories that come up. What's a category, Linus, you think you'd like to see more of or a new category you'd like to see in the uh, upcoming season of the Schmodown? I've mentioned this to Chris a lot, but I want Muppets or like Jim Henson movies. I think that'd be fun. You could do Labyrinth. Dark Crystal, any of the Muppet movies, especially Mike Carlson. I sent a tweet to him with the exact words of, would you do the Schmodown if they add Muppets as a category? And he said yes, and Mike Carlson's doing the Schmodown. So do we have hope for a Muppets category? <laughs> where, where, where does, uh, do the Teenage New Mutant Ninja Turtles, do they rank in that, in that pan- pantheon there? No. No, okay. <laughs> I know they're they, a they, creation. They, I'm just asking. They're in your Muppets. I'm just asking. They were oh. hints in creation. He they created. could. They could be. I mean, they could. You could even have Empire, if, like Star Wars yeah. questions. Yeah. Yoda. There could be some out there. Well, what about Let's you, just, Frank? Was there, would there be another category you'd like to see? Yeah, you know, I, I really want to know how you guys retool or refine um, Festival Darlings. Because uh, that was such a bugaboo for Bibiani and other people in the community thinking, what the heck was this? Uh, I'd like to see that make a return and... Uh, uh, I think it'd be quite interesting if it does, in fact, pop up on the wheel. If people will spin away, or because it's only been pulled once, will they go toward go towards that category because they might feel like they get some surface level esque questions? I will say that 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 category will be very different the next time it appears on the wheel. Okay. Questions from All that right. will be a little bit more uh, favorable to anyone who lands on it. I, Okay, okay. I like his vagueness there. I like it. Uh, one category I'd like to see in Inner Geekdom specifically, and I've said this before, is a Back to the Future only category. And if you ever need help on questions, there's Chris Galisky. I'm your guy. Like Jay Washington's <laughs> my guy. I'm your guy. Uh, one last thing. One last thing for Chris, because I don't know. I may have read your comments on it. I don't know. But since you're the head writer for the Schmodown questions, we're talking about Inner Geekdom. Let's talk about James Bond. Is James Bond to okay. you an inner geekdom category or not? Um, I'm, uh, I'm not going to really give a great answer. <laughs> I'm, I, I would pro- uh, <laughs> try to be diplomatic, uh, but I guess I personally I would lean away. But I had so many people like suggest it before we put it in that I thought, okay, you know, let's try it out. We we'll see it. See if what happens, and you know we saw what happened. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely see the argument for you know if if I was competing in uh, inner geekdom, I would not, you know, I I like the, the James Bond movies, but I would, f- f- you know, be very wary of that category. So I you know I see that there, but um, um, you know if we if we try to expand it, you know it's it's one of the few ca- uh, movie franchises groups that you know could be an argument could be made for that, but. Alas, it is no longer an inner geekdom category. Uh, int- Linus, what do you think? Real quick, weigh in. I haven't seen many James Bond's films, so I might not be the best <laughs> person to answer. But people are geeky about that. But on the same level of like a Star Wars, a Lord of the Rings, I don't see people geek the same way they geek about those categories. So, so here's a fun a fact. Tough for, here's a fun fact for the people listening at home. Linus was one year old when Die Another Day was released in theaters. Just throwing that out there. If you want to feel real old for a second, 
There you go. Well, guys, I want to thank you all for coming on the show. Uh, this has been fun. Chris, uh, Linus, let's not make this your last appearance this season. We would love to have you all on more as the Schmodown progresses and for certain matches, certain players. And we're going to have to keep an eye on these fantasy teams, Frank. I want you, You're the stats man. You're the numbers guy. You're Frankie Numbers. You're going to have to keep us a, a, abreast here. Maybe we'll have a monthly weigh-ins on who's winning so far in the Absolutely. fantasy league. I think, I think it's going to be me. I think it's going to be me <laughs> and Frank. I think you're going to have egg on your face, and it might be a no. scram- it might be scrambled, it might be an omelet, but you're going to have egg on your face for not accepting any of these trades that I propose to you. <laughs> I really okay, do we'll believe. See. Yeah, we will. See. I really we'll do. See. I do believe. Let me go around the table, I'm, Linus. I'm going to start with you. Let people know where they can find you and anything you want to plug. This is your platform. I want to plug hashtag Rundown Boys, the official fan <laughs> for the Showdown Rundown, starting a Facebook group. And oh. you can find us there. We're getting t-shirts soon. But you can find me at – I have two Twitters, Schmodown Linus and at the Linus Babcock. I have more of a personal one and one more for this kind of fandom thing. And I'm always on the Facebook page. I admin there. So if you want to talk to me, I'm pretty open. And, yeah, thanks for having me on. This is a big honor. I've been listening to this show since just about it premiered. And I listened to this exact episode you did last year, and it's just great to be on here. Thank you, guys. No, thanks, Linus. Uh, Chris Kaliski, where can people find you? Where can people submit questions to help your life a little bit easier? And what do you got to promote? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, of course, on the Schmodown Facebook page, you can always find me there. Um, and you can tweet to me at Schlick51 on Twitter. And any Schmodown questions you'd like to see in a match or maybe on the app, uh, send them to movietriviashmodown at gmail.com. And thanks again, guys, for having me back. This was a lot of fun. Look forward to being back again sometime. Frank, give us your out. What's your Twitter handles? Where can people find more about you? What do you got to plug? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at FrankieJ29. And follow by Twitter because that's where every week you will see me laying the smackdown on Brad, how I'm kicking his ass in fantasy every damn week. (laughs) <laughs> I appreciate that, Frank. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you can follow me on all social media at Brad Gilmore. I encourage you all to check out Reality of Wrestling. It's on Fight TV. It's a free show. If you like pro wrestling, which I know a lot of Schmovillians out there do, you will love this show. It's a television wrestling show we give to you every single week, 52 weeks a year, never skipping a beat. So check out Reality of Wrestling. And you can follow me, like I said, at, at Brad Gilmore. And check out Heated Conversations, Booker T and I's podcast. Podcast, which Christian Harloff has been a guest on before. Uh, we have many people from the world of sports, wrestling, movies, music, all over the place. Heated Conversations, it's on iTunes. Give us a subscribe and a five-star rating, and we would really much appreciate it. And you can follow this show at SchmodownRD, hashtag Rundown Boys. We will see you all next week here on the Schmodown Rundown. Hey, I want to thank Linus Babcock and Chris Skaliski for joining us on this episode of the Sh- uh, Schmodown Rundown. I had a really good time with those. That was a fun episode, Frank. I really enjoyed it. But um, I know it sounded like we were wrapping up there, but Frank and I wanted to take just a second here at the end of the show to address some of you all, the Schmovillians, the uh, Rundown Boys hashtag. Uh, wanted to address uh, some of your concerns about Brian Davids. I know um, there's been a lot of things going out there, going back and forth. I just want to let you all know, as far as Frank and I are concerned, as far as we know, things are still being figured out. Uh, things are still up in the air as far as Brian David's future uh, with SK+. And uh, right now, all I know is Frank and I are your crew for now, and we're going to rock the rundown in 2018. And anything can happen, though, in the future, Frank. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to this season. A lot of things, uh, a lot of good matches, a lot of people coming into the Schmodown. I'm just excited to talk about the rundown with you brad and whoever else uh we have on board uh throughout the rest of the season expect um a fun time here on the rundown and we're going to give you our best i know that's for sure hey yeah definitely frank i think we're going to rock and roll uh this season on the schmodown rundown and hey guys we're going to be uh continuing to talk about 2018 season, all news and events. And if anything does come up regarding this matter, we'll definitely keep y'all in touch. Follow us once again on Twitter at SchmodownRD. That's SchmodownRD. The RD stands for Rundown. Follow Frank's Twitter and all that and me at Brad Gilmore. Um, For now, we'll see y'all next week here on the Schmodown Rundown.